Grey Zone Warfare is a game we've touched on here on the channel a few times, chronicling the development since it was first announced, and while we're gearing up for what will be a launch into a playable build, today I wanted to compile all that information, all you need to know, all in one place for you. As we get closer to launch, we'll probably have an updated everything you need to know about the launch in particular, but in the meantime, I want to recap everything all in one place for those interested. So, drop your thoughts down below, do me a huge favor and drop a like on the video if you enjoy, or if you enjoy the variety and content, and make sure to subscribe for more Grey Zone Warfare coverage going into the launch and a ton of FPS content to follow. For now, let's get into it. So first and foremost, what is Grey Zone Warfare for those that may not be familiar? Grey Zone is an immersive tactical FPS with a maximum focus on realism, where you join a PMC or private military company and navigate this vast open world of Lamang, either solo or with a squad. You'll need to adapt to your surroundings, use tactical decisions to your advantage, and more to stay alive while fighting the AI enemies and even your other fellow human operators. While it's a tactical shooter in core philosophy, the game's extraction loop tasks you with investigating the island a few months after disaster had struck, where since then all hell had broken loose in this democratic republic of Lemang, an island nation, and while completing missions, looting and extracting to build your arsenal out, ultimately you'll want to make your way to the epicenter of the incident and the island to find out what's been going on. Now, this game is developed by Madfinger Games, and this is the team's first mainline PC game, as they've made some memorable titles and worked on other good titles such as the Dead Trigger and Samurai series, with developers in their studio comprised of the Mafia series and teams behind Viet Cong and the Hidden and Dangerous games. So far, the game has no definitive ETA for when it will be launching here into that playable build for everyone. It was announced that it was targeted and will be releasing into an early access state upcoming, but no definitive date is set just yet. The game will be launching on Steam and PC only currently. Not sure if they've mentioned if they'd be working on a console port in the distant future, but that'd be the distant future, not anytime soon. But with gameplays being released of playtests, it makes me think that we're getting pretty close. But again, nothing in particular is set in stone, no solid date given. One thing to consider is the game is again going to release in early access. So that means the game is going to be built out with the community at that point. The game, when in early access, is not complete, so you'll find things like bugs, features that can be fine-tuned and all, but the core gameplay itself is absolutely there. It's just a matter of building it out further with the feedback and development of the community. I know that some people really enjoy early access for the content of being able to, again, develop the game per se with the development team. Like that's a cool feeling to have your feedback taken into account and actually appreciated and realized when possible. But many people also do see it as a way to release too early kind of. And with some recent early access games being catastrophic to the perception of how early access is intended, I understand any skepticism. Personally, I'm the former, not the latter, but I understand where early access may not be everyone's cup of tea, and that's cool. Respect both sides of that. But anyways, the game itself will be a paid-to-access game. It's not free-to-play. We see a lot of games going free-to-play, but this isn't going to be one of them. Early access, though, versus the full game will have a price difference. Early access presumably going to be cheaper than the full launch of the game, but we also don't have a clue when the game will be launching fully. The game, while launching in early access, could be something that it could be in early access for weeks, months, years like star citizen i think is still in early access after what like 10 ish years or something like that but they stated in a q a about early access that it's a long-term project that will continue to evolve until they deliver the ultimate gaming experience they're planning to release regular updates featuring new content expanding the world building adding new weapons and gear unveiling new quests and environmental storytelling and more that the approximate timeline may span several years but depends on community feedback and the fulfillment of the shared vision but if you get it at any point during that early access period you'll end up having the game for cheaper than when it is eventually finished. Developers in the call that I had sat in on in the past to learn more about the game, they were also adamant that microtransactions didn't have a place in their game. They, at the time, didn't have any interest in really bringing any of that to the fold. So the price of the game is the only sort of barrier you'll have, which is definitely nice. Now, perhaps my lofty hope here in this is that it, one, combats cheaters, but then isn't too pricey in any capacity for the player itself. That sort of middle ground balance balance, keeping a realism element to it. I know that Tarkov still has a cheating problem from what I've heard, despite that being a paid title as well, so obviously it's not going to be 100% effective by putting any price barrier in here with it, but I don't think you'd see as many cheaters paying multiple times to create new accounts and buy the game again, as opposed to say if the game was free and there was no barrier of having to pay again. So you have that way that guarantees revenue of paying for the game, and then it also combats not necessarily needing to compensate with microtransactions to pay the developers and for the continued evolution of the game. So we'll see where it goes, but right now, nothing MTX related is planned. But let's talk about gameplay now. 
setting up the sort of basis of what the game is. The game will feature PMC factions with right now four squads of four or 16 team members. Each map and server or rather match will have 48 players on the map total as their main initial target here for this. A couple of months back when we first were talking with developers about that, that goal had not been met just yet. So I haven't heard personally any update on that, but that is still the target here. But that was again, numbers given very early in development. In regards to your gameplay experience, you'll have a forward operating base, which is how you get in and out of the map in infill and exfill. It's kind of your starting point and home base. And the only real difference is what PMC faction it is in game as of right now. There's no exclusive characters, quests, rewards, or anything like that that requires you to play one way or the other, choosing one PMC over another. But in the future, that is something that may have sort of exclusive quests or mastery items that you'll have to take part in every single one of those. At your forward operating base, you're going to have things like traders to facilitate missions and quests. They'll grant rewards. And we already saw three of those detailed in the past of Artisan, Banshee, and Gunny. Those showcasing different missions, tasks, and also different rewards along the way. But again, all coming down to what you decide to interact with. Now, the core gameplay experience is going to be, as we mentioned, PvPVE. So you have to worry about those AI around the world, but also while there may be a lot less of them, you also got to be careful of the other actual players you'll run into. So AI plus real players. There'll never really be any quests to progress your game that require you to kill another player, as we've been detailed. That's all entirely player driven. Obviously, it's conflicting factions, so they're all after the same stuff that it might be beneficial to take some PvP gunfights, but you don't have to. You're not going to be incentivized to do it. Like DMZ, most recently, I can think of in regards to like an offhand example, there were hunt contracts where you had to actually kill other operators for a contract if you decided to choose that. There's not going to be that here within this. Now, it's also detailed that there's planned to be 1000 AI on any server at any given time. So you're going to encounter AI and PVE elements a lot. Now, similar to what we have with the current Call of Duty Zombies experience for comparison, the closer to the center of the map you get, the hotter the zone becomes with more hostile engagements inbound in a scale of one to five for tiers for AI. Now, what's nice is that it appears that all AI do have the same health, so you're not going to have something where like once you get closer to the epicenter of the incident and the island, that you're going to have very tanky and very spongy AI with tons of armor or anything like that that really takes forever to kill. But you will see varying differences in those gear sets sometimes. So it is something that all headshots will be treated equally. If you headshot somebody where there's no armor or anything, it's still going to be a one shot kill, but it's not going to be something where like you have to dump two to three mags in to get a single kill. Another nice part is that it doesn't seem to be any time limit as well, that this seems to be an ever evolving world and each server will be continuously going no matter what, which will be cool. The health systems that were detailed were absurdly complex when we talked about them with the developers a couple of months ago. They're not just as straightforward as take damage damage, heal or die. You'll have indicators on your HUD that will denote where you're injured, requiring various things to help you heal up, but bullets can create cavities, break bones and all to compare to real life wounds where blood loss can lead to like an in-game downstate where if that happens, the player will have two minutes to revive them or they'll die. They also broke down some really cool ballistic systems in a recent dev blog, which showcase the different penetrations of rounds through various surfaces affected by said surface, the caliber of the rounds, and so on. We got a glimpse at what those cavities created by rounds could look like, how they can interact with different surfaces, the player themselves, how they'll all interact in game. And it's honestly pretty technologically I don't know if I want to say advanced, but like in depth, it's something that you don't see in a lot of games going this to almost scale, I guess, for realism sake of it. So that's pretty cool. Animations so far from what they showcase, there's a ton of different ones in the gameplay loop. Their animations down to the most minute details, popping a pill, eating a granola bar, all pretty wild. Some though, having seen some recent gameplay, I do think could be ironed out a little bit, like the one where you're healing up with a bandage. Again, it kind of looks like you just put a roll of toilet paper on your arm and then it's just gone. So that's something that is going to be worked out, I imagine, because still early access and grand scheme of things, it's not that big a deal, but it is something that's kind of funny to see the differences in those animations and the air quote completion of them. But anyways, moving on, what will the first playable version of this game look like? Like if we're looking at early access what we have here coming up, what will it look like from that point compared to what we actually will see maybe a couple of years down the line when the game is fully launched? 
Now, the early access version features an immersive tactical FPS sandbox as an alpha experience, signifying again, all the core features are included, but they plan to continually enhance this foundation with additional content and feature updates. So right now, the planned state of early access is going to include those three distinct PMC factions, supporting up to 48 players in total on a map with a maximum of 16 players per faction. Now that map is going to be an expansive 42 kilometer square open world of Lemang based on a real location showcasing an unprecedented representation of the jungle. From the gameplay that we had already seen, it does look, I think, graphically pretty solid, utilizing that Unreal 5 engine. And while there's some things with animations of like some foliage and stuff like that, I think could be ironed out. All in all, it looks very impressive. The map does look good, I think, and it is something that does showcase the density of that jungle. You are going to have situations where it might be tough to find and spot an enemy. But anyways, you're going to have ruthless AI behavior with hundreds of enemies reacting to the player's moves throughout their actions and emotions. Again, that target initially speaking was upwards of a thousand AI, but we'll see where we get as of the time of that launch. There's going to be complex external and terminal ballistic simulations for realistic shooting experiences, a comprehensive simulation of realistic firearm recoil based on real world data, an innovative health system that intricately simulates even bodily cavities and damage effects, as we mentioned, a network of six unique vendors offering 150 quests in total, eight highly customizable weapons with over 400 interchangeable parts, a diverse array of over 80 equipable gear items for tactical advantage, an engaging interconnected player progression system, detailed character creation and extensive apparel customization options, formidable squads allowing for up to four members for coordinated gameplay, and integrated social features including friends, voice chat, and message all for enhanced player interaction. Now, again, that is just the early access stage, but going further beyond to what that future will hold, there's also a planned state for the full release that includes, again, that complete map featuring all locations and diverse biomes, a hazardous ground zero area with end game enemies and new storylines, different types of AI behaviors based on enemy type, situation, time, and weather condition, faction-based AI with its own agenda involving quests, patrolling, scavenging, and attacking others. So you're going to have, again, that's where that exclusivity for some things that you do with different factions would come into play. So later on down the line, factions featuring progression systems and diverse reputations, meaning that you can rank up individual factions along the way, plus your own player, immersive and environmental storytelling featuring mature and engaging plots, an advanced quest system encompassing both main and side storylines, game-changing, captivating seasonal events, resource-intensive and survival-focused crafting, dynamic weather changing the gameplay experience, including an accelerated day and night cycle, which I think would be very cool for this kind of stuff. And if they can introduce things like I don't know, NVGs or something, that would be something that would grant a massive tactical advantage perhaps in completing missions, but also going up against other players. There's mentioned a unique skill system based on players' achievements, but not the grind itself, so it doesn't come down to who plays longer. Enhanced weapon customizations, fully customizable gear, and complex trading systems for players, not just through those vendors that you'd see in-game to earn different items. So that, and plus a many number of new features sparked by input and desires of the community, the full release of the game is something that seems very ambitious, but honestly attainable based off of what's already seen and is already out there for the basis of what they have right now. So as we gear up for the game's early access launch, there is a lot to consider. This game, I think, has a ton of potential, but with so much information on the table to take in, I think that is where we're going to leave you. So that's everything we know right now about Grey Zone Warfare. The title I'm hoping is poised to be that next big tactical shooter here. And with the enthusiasm and hands-on nature of the developing team here at Madfinger, I am hopeful that this is something that can take off here because they do seem to really love what they're building. They're excited to share it with the world and they're very receptive to new ideas. So very cool to see all that kind of stuff here going forward. But anyways, looking forward to getting hands on for myself and of course, continuing the content to bring you as much as possible of guides, tutorials, and just gameplays as we get into that launch window. But for now, that is what we're going to call it. But before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage. I firmly believe these guys are the best bullet glasses on the market. I've worked with them now for over three years and cannot recommend them enough. They're the most lightweight, comfortable, and durable frames out there, and I definitely think they've helped my daily productivity. Now, full transparency, they are a bit more of an investment, but I do think your vision is absolutely worth investing into, especially if you're like me and you're looking at a monitor, phone, or gaming for a good chunk of the day. So if you guys would like to learn more, at the very least, I'd recommend checking out their website where they can better break down the science and all the specifics way better 
better than I could, but what I can personally say is that I'd highly recommend them. So if you guys would like to learn more, check the link below. And if you'd like to pick something up for yourself, use code Espresso to get 10% off your entire order. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of Gray Zone Warfare? Are you looking forward to learning more, seeing more, and maybe even getting hands on? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, you like to stay up to date with all things Gray Zone Warfare and other FPS content here on the channel, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button. But for now, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.